Hi, and welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be talking about Terraform state files. What are they and how should you manage them? In this video, I'll explain what a state file is, why it's super important, and tell you what you really need to know to avoid costly problems down the road. A state file is a link between your Terraform code and the state of your deployed resources, and it's a vital component of Terraform. To explain this, I'm going to start off with a brand new Terraform project and walk through the usual steps of initializing, planning and applying our Terraform code. And along the way, we'll look at what role the Terraform state file plays in gluing all of this together. We'll then discuss some important points around Terraform state files and how they should be managed in a real world production scenario. So let's hop on over to the computer now and start from the beginning. So this is a pretty simple Terraform project. We've got our instance.tf file here where we're going to be spinning up five EC2 instances in AWS. And we also have this security.tf where we're going to be configuring a security group resource within AWS. We're doing all this with the AWS provider and we've got a bunch of variables declared. So nothing too complicated. So now my first step, I'm just going to run a Terraform init in order to initialize this Terraform repository and that will pull in my AWS provider and any other dependencies. And let's just fast forward until this finishes. So now Terraform has been initialized in this directory. I can now run a Terraform plan. So we can see here, we've got six resources to add. We've got our security group and our five EC2 instances. So now we're gonna run Terraform apply. And because this is a brand new project, this will cause Terraform to interact with the AWS provider and create all of the resources that I've configured. Let's do that now. So Terraform is now creating my resources in AWS. Let's just fast forward till this finishes. So here we can see Terraform's created our AWS instances and our security group. And if I switch over here to my AWS console, we can see here we've got our five instances running. And now we've done our Terraform apply, we've now got this new file here called terraform.tf state. So the Terraform state file is a JSON representation of the state of all of the resources under Terraform management. So when we run Terraform apply on a brand new project, Terraform's just going out there and creating all the resources that we've configured. But we don't use Terraform just to create resources. We use Terraform to manage and maintain those resources over the course of time. So Terraform uses this state file as a mapping between what you've defined in your configuration and what exists out there in the real world. So if we make a change, say to our security group rules, and we change one of the attributes here, we can use Terraform plan to see what those changes are gonna be. When I run Terraform plan, there's two things happening. The first step is that the state is refreshed with the current state of those resources on AWS. And then Terraform will compare what I have in my Terraform code to what exists in the Terraform state file. And that's how it can determine if there's any changes that need to be made. But here we can see the configuration that currently exists in the Terraform state compared to the configuration that I've defined in my code. Now when I run Terraform apply, those changes will be reconciled and the state file will be updated. So I'm going to pause here before we confirm the apply. And you'll notice here that Terraform has created a lock file. So because the Terraform state file is effectively the source of truth as to what the state of your resources are, it's imperative that we don't have two Terraform processes both running simultaneously and competing with each other to update the state file. So Terraform creates this lock file which it releases after the Terraform apply command is run, and that stops two Terraform processes from simultaneously trying to update the state file. So I'm going to apply my changes now and let Terraform apply do its thing, and then we'll see that that lock file gets released. Now if I do a Terraform plan, what I've got in my Terraform state file now matches my desired configuration in my Terraform code, so we don't have any changes to reconcile. The key takeaway here is that the Terraform state file provides the mapping between what you've defined in your Terraform code and your resources out there in the real world. So the Terraform state file is super important, and we're going to look now at some reasons why you probably don't want to be managing it like I'm doing here. So first off, what happens if you accidentally delete or lose your state file? But because the state file is the only mapping that Terraform has between your configured resources in your code and your resources out there in the real world, without the state file, Terraform has no way to connect those two things together. So in essence, without your state file, Terraform will forget or be unable to manage those resources anymore. Recovering from that scenario isn't completely impossible, but it is pretty painful. Our first concern here is that we need to protect the state file against unwanted deletion, and we want to make sure it's backed up. So just having it floating around in my home directory is not such a good idea. The second reason we need to protect the state file is it potentially contains sensitive information such as passwords. Because the state file records all of the properties of your resources, how they're configured, that includes secrets. The third reason why having a local state file is a bad idea is if you're working in a team. 
But if two different team members were to check out this repository and run Terraform init and Terraform apply, both will go off and create those resources and create their own state files. So we've effectively got two sets of infrastructure. The way some people try and get around this is to check their state file into their VCS repo. And that's a bad idea on many levels. Firstly, there's nothing to stop two people from cloning the repository that has the up-to-date state file, both making changes in running Terraform, which will update both of their local Terraform state files differently. And then when they try to check those back into their VCS repo, those changes can't be merged. And now we've got the situation where there is no single source of truth as to the state of our resources because we've got two different state files. Another reason this is a really bad idea, as we said earlier, our state file contains sensitive information. We've got secrets such as passwords, so storing all that as a JSON file in your VCS repository is probably not what you want to be doing. So how do we effectively manage our Terraform state file in the real world and address all of these issues? For that, we need to look at Terraform backends. Terraform manages state using one of its available backends. By default, if we don't configure anything, it will use the local backend, and the local backend will simply write a file out to disks. This is what we've been doing so far. But Terraform also gives us a variety of other backends that allow us to store and manage our Terraform state remotely. And that's definitely what we're going to need if we're going to have multiple people working on the same Terraform project. So there's a bunch of backends that ship with Terraform. We're going to look specifically at the S3 backend. By using the S3 backend, we can have all of our Terraform state stored in a bucket in AWS S3. Right off the bat, this solves a couple of problems. Firstly, now we've got it in a shared location, we don't have the issue of multiple copies of the state existing. So we've got one state file that can be accessed by multiple people. Plus, we can use S3's encryption capabilities to help us secure that sensitive information that's in the state file. So what we're going to do now is create an S3 bucket in AWS. Then I'm going to use Terraform to migrate the existing state that I've got locally on my disk into that S3 bucket and then configure Terraform to look at my remote state file in my S3 bucket going forward. So let's do that. I'm just going to give it a name. We're going to keep it in EU West 1. We obviously want to make sure we're blocking all public access. I highly recommend you enable bucket versioning for this. That will certainly help in a disaster situation where you've corrupted your state file for any reason. I'm going to enable that. We're going to make sure we've got server-side encryption enabled and create that bucket. The AWS credentials that I'm using for this demo are already configured to access all of my S3 resources. You'll probably need to add those as well and make sure that whatever AWS role you're using has access to that S3 bucket. So now back to our Terraform project, there's two things that we need to do. We need to configure this new backend in our Terraform code, and then we need to migrate the existing state that we've got here into AWS. So we're going to come across into my terraform.tf file here where we've got the Terraform configuration block. And within that block, we're going to add a new section called backend. I've got one prepared here, and we're just going to edit this. So here we're telling Terraform that we want to use S3 as a remote backend for our Terraform state. We need to give it the bucket name. The key within the S3 bucket, which is akin to the file name, we're going to leave that as Terraform state, and our region, which is EU West 1. So now we're going to save that. So normally when we make changes in the Terraform configuration block, if we change providers, for example, we need to run Terraform init. And this is no exception. We're going to run Terraform init, but we're also going to add an extra flag to tell it to migrate the existing state that we've got into our new S3 backend. So I'm going to run Terraform init, and we're going to give it the migrate state flag. So Terraform can see that I've got a local state here and I've got nothing configured in my S3 backend and it's asking me if I want to migrate, which I will say yes. So if we come back over to AWS and check inside our S3 bucket, we can see that it's created our terraform.tf state file in S3. To validate this, I'm going to remove the Terraform local state that I've got here. And now we're going to do a Terraform plan. And now we can see without having a local state file, Terraform is still keeping track of all of our instances because it's using the remote state file in S3. So we've solved the issue about multiple state files existing at the same time and potentially being different. And because we're now storing our state file in an encrypted S3 bucket, we don't have to worry about secrets and passwords anymore. But we're still not completely out of the woods. So now we've got the issue that if two team members are running Terraform at the same time, they potentially could be trying to update the state file simultaneously. This can create a number of problems and race conditions and can completely corrupt your state file. So in order to mitigate this, we need a way for person A to be able to lock that state file and person B to have to wait for that lock to be released. 
We saw that with the local state file that Terraform creates a lock file to make sure that no other Terraform process can update the state file while we're applying the Terraform run. So we need a similar thing for the remote backend. The S3 backend in Terraform gives us the ability to do locking by using a DynamoDB table within AWS. That's pretty easy to set up if we just head over to DynamoDB in our AWS console and we're going to create a new table. I'm going to call it Terraform State. The important thing here is the partition key, which must be lock ID, capitalized. Everything else we can keep as default and create the table. Now we've got our DynamoDB table active, we can flip back into our terraform.tf file. And in our backend configuration block, we're just going to add a new parameter, DynamoDB table, and give it the name of our table, which is Terraform state. Save that. And now because we've made a change to the Terraform configuration block, I'm going to do a Terraform init dash reconfigure. And we can just check everything is good with a Terraform plan and no changes. So now we're in a situation where our Terraform state is stored remotely in S3, it's encrypted. If multiple people are running against the project, then we have locking in place to make sure that there's no race conditions and no corruption with two people trying to update the state file at the same time. So we've explored all of the best practices around self-managing your state file using a Terraform backend. And we've seen the things that you need to take into consideration, such as protecting the state file from accidental deletion, worrying about secrets, and dealing with potential locking issues. But there is actually another way where you don't have to worry about any of that. We can use an infrastructure as code management platform such as Spacelift to do all the heavy lifting for us. Spacelift is effectively a CI-CD platform for your infrastructure. It works with a variety of backend tools such as Terraform, Pulumi, Kubernetes, Ansible. And using Spacelift, you can build sophisticated, secure, and customized workflows around your Terraform deployments. And one of the cool features of Spacelift is it can manage your state file internally. So you don't have to worry about deploying the infrastructure, the storage, the security around maintaining your state file. Spacelift takes care of all that for you. So let's take a look at that in action. I've got my Terraform project in GitHub, and I'm going to import that project into Spacelift and migrate my Terraform state from my AWS 3 bucket into Spacelift. Let's dive in. So because we're going to be moving our Terraform state into Spacelift to manage, I first need to pull that state off its current location, which is on the S3 backend on AWS. So to do that, I can just run the Terraform state pull command, which will output the current state. And I'm going to pipe that into a file called terraform.tf state. I can see that file has been created. And if I just check in here, I can see I've got the state of all of my currently configured resources. So I've got a Spacelift account here that's been configured with my AWS credentials and is linked to my VCS repo on GitHub. I can come over here and create a new stack and call this Terraform Demo. I'm gonna select my repository. And now here in the stack configuration, I get the option to manage state, which I want enabled. And because I'm migrating a Terraform project here into Spacelift, I want to import an existing state file, and I'm going to upload the state file that we pulled from Terraform state earlier. And hit continue. I can save that stack. The next, I'm going to just connect this stack with my AWS account. So I'm going to come over here into settings and integrations. I already have an AWS integration set up on this account. I'm just going to attach it. Now, before I trigger a stack run, there's one important thing I need to change here in my Terraform code. If I go into my terraform.tf file, because we now have Spacelift managing our state internally, we can remove this backend configuration completely. Save that, and I'm just going to push those changes up to Git. Now I can see that that git push has triggered a run on my stack and I can go in here and have a look at what the plan looks like. See that Spacelift has run a Terraform plan. It can see all of our instances, our security group and doesn't want to make any changes. So we've got our project in Spacelift and we've easily migrated our Terraform state into Spacelift to manage. We no longer need to worry about it. So hopefully this video has given you a good idea about what the Terraform state file is and why you should care about it. We've looked at some of the do's and don'ts around self-managing your state file. 
Plus, we've seen we can use a platform like Spacelift to do the heavy lifting for us and take away all of the headaches. Speaking of Spacelift, they have a cool cheat sheet for Terraform State, which you can download from the link in the description. We've covered a few of the Terraform State commands. We've looked at local state. We've looked at the S3 backend. To learn about some more cool features, then click on that link and download the free PDF. I hope you've enjoyed this video. As usual, a thumbs up is always appreciated. Any questions, please leave a comment below. I'm Craig Dunn, developer advocate over at Spacelift. Until the next time.